Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the original stories by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed, Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Darling, what are you thinking of? Hmm? That's what I'm thinking of, too. What? Hmm? Hmm means telling Roger about your big new job in Chicago, doesn't it? Frankly, I don't know how to do it. I didn't even get a chance. He wasn't in the office all day. Oh, probably Christmas shopping. Tell him Friday. I'd rather not think about it till after Christmas. Me too. We'll act as if we're never going. How's that? Cowardly, but less. <laughs> I've forgotten already. I love New York around Christmas. We have only 15 minutes more of shopping time before Christmas. We still have to get Mama a present. I still haven't got an idea in my head, have you? What do other people get their mothers? What did you used to give Mama before we were married? We never gave each other anything. Sort of seems silly for us to exchange presents, just the two of us. Well, I insist. After all, she gave me you. The least I can do is give her a handkerchief or a lollipop in return. What about presents from husbands? Do you believe in them? Mm, Not on anniversaries or holidays. Besides, you've given me one already. I have? Certainly. Mm, How nice of me. When? Uh, a couple of months ago. Really? Yep. You mean Shakespeare? Nope. Can't you guess? Nope. As a matter of fact, you're an Indian giver. Because I'm going to return your present to you. Oh, don't you like it? I love it, but I'm going to return it in June. How do you guess? <laughs> I guess, Mrs. Nobby. You know, I can't get used to the idea of your being a mother. You'll get used to it. <laughs> Darling, is Christmas ever been so Christmassy? I used to hate November and December and holidays and winter months. The early dark in the afternoon, the days getting shorter. I love the days getting shorter. Makes the nights longer. Dark now already. Nice. Mm. I don't like to change the subject, Mrs. Norton, but what about Mrs. Brown's Christmas present? (gasps) David, look. Look where we are. I wish we were home. We're almost at Mr. Flannery's pet shop. How'd you like to go in and say Merry Christmas to him? Is this a plot? A plot? You know what I mean. Have I been led here like a sheep? No, honestly, I wouldn't think of buying a dog for Mama. Or for you, I Of course not. Uh Suppose he has a nice big one. Come on, let's go in. All right, but just one thing, darling. What, David? This visit is merely a social call. We're not going to buy anything. Of course not. Who said we were? Sure, Mama will like this parrot for Christmas. She'll love him. Sailors always have parrots. Mama gets seasick. <laughs> David, what are we going to do about wrapping up Solomon? That's a funny name for a parrot. Uh, Let's just tie a big red ribbon around his neck. Say, would you mind putting your finger on this knot so I can tie a bow around the package? And do you call this wrapping a present? What's the matter with it? Everything. It's all coming apart here. Of course it is. It's not together yet. That's cheating. Here, give it to me. You didn't have to tear it up. Yeah. Could have used it for something else. Now, give me a better ribbon. Oh, oh darling. Hmm? Listen how quiet it is. It was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was staring. Not even a mouse. Not even Shakespeare. No. Or Solomon, worse luck. I wish he'd say something. <laughs> Must be awfully cold out tonight. How do you know? Because it's so warm and cozy in here. At night, it's like living in a little pool of light and warmth. That's what our apartment is, isn't it? Some people would call it a zoo. I love zoos. <laughs> <gasps> the doorbell. Yeah, I heard it. David, the doorbell. Solomon. Well, he didn't ring it. Maybe it's Mama. We'd better hide him. I'll put him in the closet. <laughs> 
Be careful, don't spill him. Now, Solomon, old boy, come on with Papa. Thank goodness he is a silent bird tonight. And he'd better stay silent, too. In you go, sailor. You want something toot twice on your horn. All right. Everything ship shape. Hello, Mom. Why, Roger. Roger Santa Claus Killian himself. I'm so <laughs> glad to see you. It's been weeks. Hello, Roger. David, Merry Christmas. Same to you. We missed you at the office today. Did you? How nice. Sit down, please. Thank you. Roger, would you like to see the parrot we bought for my mother? Oh, I would. I love parrots, though they make me self-conscious. I always think they know more than they actually do. <laughs> well, ours doesn't know anything. Or if he does, he hasn't spoken about it yet. Do you think he might be sick? I'd better get him. I'm glad to see you, Roger. I've been wanting to speak to you. I have, too. I stayed out of the office today. I had to see my lawyer before we talked. And you know how long those things take. Yes, I suppose I do. Oh, he, he, here he is. Roger, this is Solomon. Solomon, say hello. Come on. Oh, snooty, huh? <laughs> well, hello to you, old fellow. Hello. Say hello. Say a verse. Say the jib is looking. <laughs> say anything. David, you'll give him stage fright. <laughs> Let's all just ignore him. Maybe he'll come out of his shell. He came out decades ago. <laughs> you know, David, coming up here to visit you and Claudia is a tonic. I think Christmas was meant for people like you. We don't really need Christmas. I suppose that's why it's so nice to have it. Well, whether you need Christmas or not, I've come up here to give you my gift. I bet it's beautifully wrapped. As a matter of fact, not wrapped at all. I'm glad. It would have made me very self-conscious. You won't even be able to hold it in your hand. No? No. David, what do you think? No, Roger's trying to tell us, darling. I know, but something you can't even hold in your hands. I can't imagine. I'm going to offer David... No, let me begin a little further back. A few days ago, I told David that I was thinking of giving up the firm. I hardly thought it was worth carrying on. It's worth it, Roger, if you want it. Exactly. I've had the firm quite a number of years. I don't see how you could give it up, Roger. Well, I've decided that I can't let go either. Not yet. But I haven't been thinking only of myself. It's not a very nice thing at this season of the year to tell a man he's got to go and look for another job. Well, it can't always be helped, Roger. I know. But when it can, it should be. You and Claudia are just getting settled. You need whatever security you can have. And I believe in you, David. I believe you're going to be a great architect. And someday I'm going to be proud of having had you as a partner. As a partner? Roger, did... Did you say partner? If you'll accept. I've come here tonight to offer you a partnership in my firm. I mean, our firm. That's a... That's a very fine offer. It's the best that I can give you. And I wouldn't want you to have any less. David couldn't ask for more. I don't know, Claudia. I've been feeling very tired and a bit old. But now I think I can pull through the mess we're in, but not alone. I need help. And I'm asking David for it. You're not asking for anything he doesn't want to give, Roger. David... You won't find this partnership a very rich one. We'll have to share my drawing account until things get so that there's enough for two. It probably won't even be anything as regular as the salary you're getting now. Well, who cares about that? I do. For you. As a matter of fact, on my way up here, I fancied I was bringing you a gift. At least I tried to believe that. But in hearing myself make the offer, I feel rather like the captain who's asked you to remain on his sinking ship. The gift is to myself. Then, then you don't know what you're giving me. You're giving me my chance at, at independence, at working for myself, of doing just those things that I like best. A building something that's going to be ours. I don't think you could have given a more generous gift, Roger. But you, you, you don't have to accept, you know. Just think it over. 
<laughs> so I don't have to accept, do I? Nope, you don't. <laughs> That's what the man said. I guess I'll I'll just have to think it over. Yeah, I guess you better. Well, I've thought it over. So have I. What do you think? Me? Same as you. Mr. Killian, you have just acquired yourself a new partner. Well, well, it's good news. Honestly, Roger, now tell me. Did you think I'd say no? Did you think that I'd pass up an offer to be your partner, to work with you, for us? I... Well, frankly, I hope very much you'd say yes. David, seriously, one thing. If you ever get an offer that's decent, really good, someplace where you'll have the backing to develop this freight terminal idea of yours, you grab it. No, we're we're going to develop that freight terminal idea together, Roger. You and I. It may take us a, a little more time than we'd well. Well, anyway, we'll we'll do it. No matter how long it takes. Roger, I I, I can't tell you what you've given us. I've given you absolutely nothing. But thank you. And, uh, Merry Christmas, partner. Well, partner, same to you. <laughs> Just before you came, Roger, Dave and I thought that there was not one thing anyone could give us. We were wrong. You have brought us that one thing. Claudia, you're very sweet. I haven't been kissed like that in years. I like it. Very much. Good night. And Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Roger. Oh, David, he's such a generous man. He is that. Do you know why, Claudia? Why, darling? Because you. You allowed him to be generous, darling. But, Claudia, do you know... Do you know what all of this really means? Do I know? It means not having to keep up with the Joneses. No formal dinner parties with Mr. Carrington and his board. It means no big salary every week. Isn't it wonderful? I think so. I think it's very wonderful. I never wanted any of that, did you? You, my dear girl, are a nice, very nice girl. Oh, David... Now, we don't have to go to Chicago at all, do we? We've been to Chicago, darling. We've been there and back. It was a wonderful trip, David. I'm glad we're home. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. When visitors come in during the holidays for an evening of music or talk, you'll all enjoy the hours more if there's pleasant refreshment at hand. But that refreshment needn't be extravagant, and it needn't tax your energies or take much time. Just have your grocer or service station attendant put a case of Coca-Cola in the car today. Tuck plenty of Coke into the refrigerator, and you're ready to share the pause that refreshes with all who come. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you, transcribed, with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir and remember. Whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause... The pause that refreshes. <laughs>